100 miles from Calcutta by way of New Delhi to Kashmir. The man I was following was in the next carriage. His name was Blatter. Any time now, he'll be passing on information to the other side. And I meant to be there when he delivered it. If you please, sir, your ticket to Karas. Oh, my ticket. His entrance had been well timed. He blocked the door like a human bulldozer. And somewhere behind him, Blatter jumped the train and got free. Here you are. Thank you, sir. All right, thanks. Sir. Every government has its secret service branch. America, it's CIA. France, Desiem Bureau, England, MI5. NATO also has its own. A messy job? Well, that's when they usually call on me. Or someone like me. Oh, yes. My name is Drake. John Drake. Karaz was a sweltering, bug-infested place. Plata had completely vanished. The only person who could help me was our local agent, a man called Menarji. He was the village letter writer. Oh, first, let us see what is strange. Oh, that's a kitchen. Thanks. They tell me that you have the secret of many tongues. Oh, alas. This is written in an obscure form of Tamil. I have only 130 dialects. You see, now, Tamil is a very obscure language. Can you read it? Yes, Mr. Drake. I can read it. How can I help you? I've been following that man for the past five days. The cockroach? What? Oh, that is the name he's known by here. I got off the train today. I lost him in the confusion of the station. Oh, the arrival of the train is quite an event for us. There is always confusion. This time I think it was something special just for my benefit. I must find him and quick. Well, you leave this matter to me, Mr. Drake. I will send someone to you when I have some news. May I need a car? Oh, we have a garage. Uh, run uh, by an Englishman called uh, Waters. Rollo Waters. But... But what? But he's very dangerous. Very nice man, mind you, but... Uh, his tongue is too free, like... Like a well-oiled gate. He drinks too much. What is the heat? Mind you, he's a very good mechanic. Thanks. I'm obliged. Come, Tender Blossom. Mr. Waters. Mr. Waters. Down below. Uh, my name is Alan, uh, John Allen. Oh, hello. You're new here. That's right. I'm staying at the Hotel Miramar for a couple of days. I may need a car. Can you help me? Oh, sure. But uh, it'll cost you. Oh, hang on a moment. Rollo. Rollo. Sorry about the din. How long will you be with the car? The brakes, uh, uh, dangerous as they are, particularly on those mountain roads. Oh, a couple of hours. Yeah, better make it three to be on the safe side. All right, do what you have to. I'll be back about four. Just a minute. This has gone out. On second thoughts, you'd better make. Oh, strange woman. She English? Yes, yes, she's, uh, she's English, all right. Her name's Goddard, Louise Goddard. Yes, you know, if I had time to cultivate a friendship, I'd... <laughs> she's uh, not married. Oh, yeah, she's, she's married, all right. At least she's got a husband, but... Oh, maybe it's the time of the year or the heat. What was it you said you wanted? A car. Oh, oh nothing fancy, but reliable. Yeah, how about a drink? Oh, sorry, too early for me, up before the sun's below the yardarm. The sun sunk below my yardarm a long time ago. Uh, one more follow, one more friend. Did Benarchy send you? <laughs> Are you sure he 
and change your mind. It's a very hot. There was my man. But now there was a change in him. His eyes were never still for a second, like an animal that has sensed danger. I knew that feeling. He was about to make his contact. was made. Now I had a new contact, Louise Goddard. It was essential that I knew how they were channeling all their secret information out of the country to the north and across the Himalayan barrier. Waters. Waters. Hey, Waters, come on. Wait up. Wait up. Go away. Hey, uh, the garage is on fire. Uh, it's insured. Uh. 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 Orders. You were talking about mountain roads when you were speaking to that woman today. Talking about what? Who? The Goddard woman, Mountain Roads, do you remember? Oh, her. Uh, oh, oh. You mean to say you woke me up from my... My siesta? Just to ask me about her. Did you know where she lives? Uh, yes. Up the mountains. High up. On the top of the world. You sober enough to show me exactly where on the map? Here. My name's Goddard, uh, John Goddard. Mine's Alan, John Allen. Uh, I'm afraid that I'm uh, lost in the mountains. Yes, it's a bit of a lonely spot up here. Lucky you found us in a way. Yeah. Right. What's Mongoose? Yes, yes, he is. Uh, well, won't you um, come in and have a drink? Oh, that's very nice of you. Thanks very much. Hold on, then. I can't tell you how welcome you are here, Mr. Allen. Life becomes pretty empty up here in the mountains, month in and month out. As witness, three men who passed this way. Three in the last five years. It's not much of a score, is it? Uh -huh. Whiskey? Thank you very much. The woman in the picture is my wife, Louise. She's very lovely. Yes, he is indeed. Uh, the man in the middle picture is Van Horner, at least he was. The mountaineer? Yes. Yes, he was killed on Everest four months after that picture was taken. It was a strange man. You know, I think he knew the mountain would kill him. He knew? <laughs> well, he told me as much. And yet he still had to try. Yes, Mr. Allen. You see, there are, there are many of us like that. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Father. Uh, help, sir. Oh, may I? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. That'll do, Father. Look, uh, Mr. Allen, why don't you stay to supper? In fact, you could stay the night. Oh, that's extremely kind of you, but as a matter of fact, I, uh, I should be moving on. Moving on? Now, I'm sorry you came here at all. People didn't seem to realize how much company means to us up here. They think they can just walk in and walk out as if it was a... I'm... I'm so sorry, Mr. Allen. I'm... The trouble is, I'm too much alone. As a matter of fact, my time is my own for a couple of days. Oh, believe me, you'd be more than welcome. The air up here in the mountains stimulates the body, but the mind without stimulation simply deteriorates. Not only on mountain tops. No, no, I suppose not. Then you will stay. Thank you. Oh, that'll be my wife now. Will you excuse me? 
But don't stand on ceremony. Help yourself. Uh, thank you very much. Hello, darling. Whose car is this? Oh, a very interesting fellow. Uh, he got lost in the mountains. I asked him to come in and have a drink. Uh, you saw Blatter? Everything all right? Of course. Good. How long has he been here? Oh, not long, darling. Come and meet him. Oh, Mr. Allen. I'd like to introduce my wife. Hello, Mrs. Goddard. How do you do? I've just been telling Mr. Allen he's only our fourth visitor in five years. I got lost on the mountain. Oh, well, that can happen to anyone, even us. The road didn't lead anywhere. It just stopped. I'm afraid I gave the car a bit of a beating, though. <laughs> well, now, uh, dinner in one hour, all right, Mr. Allen? Whatever suits you. Perfect. Excuse me. My husband's a born organizer. He was a senior executive in the Indian government service for 10 years. Really? Doesn't look old enough for that. What brings you to the top of our mountain? I'm a mineralogist. You know, we make the initial surveys for the major combines, analytical reports and so on. Oh, so the important people act on what you say? Well, sometimes we can only hope that they will. Do you often work alone? Usually. We're a very small organization. What do you hope to find in our mountain? Uranium, for one thing. Of course, we can't tell till we start to dig. Some surfaces are very deceptive. I remember once in Colorado... Oh, excuse me. The born organizer's forgotten something. I won't be a moment. Oh, yes, thank you. Well, what do you make of this chap, Alan? Seen him before. Hold it. Another one for the celebrated Goddard collection. Is that a Polaroid? Yes. Well, if you'd excuse me just a minute. You've made no old summer, Mr. Allen. Very painless way of giving so much pleasure. Why are you really here? I lost my way. You don't look like a man who loses his way. Our oh, looks can be very deceiving sometimes. Oh. Our makeshift power system, one of the disadvantages of living on top of a mountain. Therapeutic elixir at $25 a day. Very still. How long before someone says it can't closed? Please don't say that. Because it's true or because... Yes. If our suspicions are right and he tries to take you back there... He won't. If there were no other way of stopping him, I'd kill him.
Here it was. The channel of their whole intelligence system. agent. Eliminate. You must admit this is a strange place to find you at this hour. And who exactly are you? You're a machine. Who'll tell you all about me? Hey, are, Mr. Goddard. It's all in six words. I'm sorry you had to read it first. Do you imagine that you could eliminate me as easily as the others? Mr. Drake, I have never killed anyone. All by remote control. You've not actually had any contact with the killing, so your hands are clean, is that it? Whatever goes on down there is no concern of mine. From high on your mountaintop, you pass on orders for the death of men hundreds of miles away, and you feel nothing. Nothing? Why should I? Do you imagine that your lack of feeling absolves you from guilt? But don't you see that these men are blocking the way of progress? These men also have wives and children, Mr. Goddard. All right, fine. Then why must they turn back the clock? Maybe because they're idealists. Like you. And you. Let me tell you something about myself, Mr. Drake. Seven years ago, there was a witch hunt, huh? a purge in the Indian government service. I was arrested and charged with subversive activities. What, such as uh, passing information to a foreign power? Yes. You know, some people would call you a traitor, Mr. Goddard. Well, that very much depends on your point of view. Anyway, I was sent to prison for five years. Five years without contact with the outside world, even my wife. And then suddenly, one day, I was released, granted a full pardon by a generous gesture of the state. A free man again, but the stigma of traitor doesn't wash off that easily. It won't wash off here. That's my business. Yes, it is. I hope you can live with it. I hope you can live with the suffering and death you brought to all those people down there. It'll be light in about an hour. I suggest that you have your wife pack your bag. Do you think you'll ever get me to New Delhi? Oh, yes, Mr. Goddard. I'll get you to New Delhi. Don't count on it. be very proud of your triumph, Mr. Drake. Not particularly. By taking him down there into the heat of the valley, you're going to kill him. Am I? Your hands will be clean. You're, you'll only be finishing the work they started. Right. They only released him from prison after leaving him there to rock for five years because they discovered he was going to die. Do you think it's by chance we live up here in the mountains? What do you think I was buying that day you saw me in Karaz? Streptomycin. My husband has one collapsed lung and the other... If you let him stay here, he has one year to live at the most. Take him down into the valley and he'll die within a matter of hours. Mrs. Goddard, I'm afraid that I have Oh, to he won't beg for mercy. Only I can do that for him. I have no choice. Your husband will be the first to agree with that. What is it, Prana? I want your gun, please. My gun? What on earth for? I do not have to answer to you now for what I do. Your gun, please. Oh, now, while I hold this gun, 
you will answer to me for everything you do. Now, get out. Go on, get out. You can die as easily as any of us, Mr. Drake. I didn't come all this way without letting someone know where I was going. You'd only be signing your own death warrant, you know. Do you think that would matter to me if my husband dies? Who's going to die? Me? No, well, I... Tony, I brought your things. Do you really want to go? Want to? I have to go sometime. I shall miss this place. It's been very good to me. Time we were off. sweltering oven of a world. One of those freak days before the monsoon, with a temperature at 120 in the shade. Our aircraft was delayed, and then delayed again. Louise Goddard had not lied. As the minutes went by, I watched him crumble. It was frightening. I was responsible for this. I'll try and get an aircraft. Be back as soon as I can. We must go back. There's still time. No, no. But you have to. No. Darling, in the car, the hypothermic. Please, darling, please. But it isn't possible to get a plane in here now. It is too late. I can handle that. All you have to do is get me to a phone that works and send somebody up to Goddard's bungalow to destroy all that equipment, will it? Right. We can be in Karachi. Within the hour. It doesn't matter now. Sorry. You should be buried back there, on the mountain. That's what you want. It's what he would have wanted. It was always what Noel wanted. I loved him. She would hate me for the rest of her life. But I think that maybe he'd have understood. It was my job. <laughs> 